Hello, I'm absolutely thrilled to be sharing with you how to establish a modern employee experience utilizing ServiceNow's Employee Center Pro with ITSM. Now, my friend Joe has come along for the ride in order to help us understand exactly how we can achieve this. The thing to know about Joe first and foremost, though, is probably like many of us, he has a slight addiction to Amazon. The reason for that is because he has a very simplified search where he can search across things like paper products that he might need, his next home project, or even his favorite sports team apparel, and get exactly what he needs. Other times, Amazon actually tells him what he needs through proactive communications like his most recent purchases, turning into future purchases, and things showing up on his doorstep that he never even dreamt of. The benefit for Amazon with that is the fact that they get more of Joe's money. So when we apply that consumer grade experience to the organization, the benefit that our employees have is a deeper engagement, essentially allowing to find things that they didn't know they needed in the organization. And the benefit that we receive is the fact that that productivity for those employees is boosted and ultimately cost reduced. So what you're seeing here is literally serving as Joe's digital headquarters or his one start shop to everything he needs in the organization. He has those same proactive communications. And the thing he knows is that the corporate dollar is much more respectful <laughs> rather than offering a new laptop to every employee in the organization every day. He recognizes that this is targeted and very specific to him, very personalized. What he doesn't realize is that the complexity is hidden behind the scenes on how to achieve this. ServiceNow is uniquely connecting priorly disparate systems, such as perhaps your core HR, your single source of truth for employees, to pull in something like an anniversary date. That's what allows us to recognize that Joe's been here for about three years, and therefore it's time to update that laptop and ultimately go ahead and get him on that shopping journey. The benefit for Joe is the fact that he feels seen, he feels heard in the organization, which potentially could be really impactful if he's something like a remote employee. And then the true desired outcome is that his productivity is boosted in a very literal manner because he has a machine that's better, stronger, faster to help him do his job. But since we're not offering Joe a laptop on every day of his employment, once he hits that three-year mark, he will move on. We need to be able to see how we can make Joe better, stronger, faster in his job to boost that productivity. One of the biggest ways we can do that is by, again, hiding complexity like machine learning behind the scenes and surfacing up to Joe things that he didn't know he needed until he needed them. So very similar to that Amazon example, recommendations for me are exactly that, for me. So it could be pieces of information, even action that Joe could take based on his past search history, or even just based on people who have very similar backgrounds to Joe. He also can go ahead and stay in the know with things like company news or recent tweets, or most importantly, connecting those disparate experiences and showcasing all those different great investments that you have in your organization. This is so important, especially since Okta recently found that the average large company now has more than 80 different employee-facing apps. That number has increased by more than 40% over five years. And the thing that I think about with that is that can probably cause that proverbial dizzy batter or dare we make a pun of dizzy office chair syndrome for Joe. And that's a lot of lost time searching for the right application for the right need. And instead we can handhold Joe over to the proper application and really serve up that one start shop for him. Now, Joe also has various different learning styles being queued up here for him. If a picture is worth a hundred or a thousand words, a video is worth 10,000. And then drawing him in with things that might be comfortable for his geo or his locale, like the next recent holiday, or even surfacing up things in his native language, whether that be physically translating everything you've seen on the page, or even having a conversation with the virtual agent or a live agent. Now, uniquely, and but yet very effective, we want to maybe potentially go ahead and draw Joe in through some various literal appetizing offerings, if you will. And this is a fairly appetizing for all of our ServiceNow customers that have recognized the unique differentiation that we can bring with the extensibility of the platform. 
You might hear us say these terms, low code, no code. And really all that means is a very light lift to truly extend your investment with ServiceNow to make it that much more applicable to your employees and to your organization by creating simple apps like this. Could be a lunch menu for you, a kudos app for another, or even a piece of project-based work for another organization. This might be the key that gets Joe to come into the office today if he is that traditionally remote employee. And outside of just appealing to his physical appetite, uh, we have this appetite handled for anything he needs across the organization. So his interest might be piqued in that world of IT, given the fact that he just has a new laptop on the way. So this can really allow Joe to get anything and everything he needs, moving past just information into that dynamic nature that ServiceNow can uniquely offer with requests, allowing him to take action, essentially to do, to get help and to receive the care that he needs. Now he can essentially have that consumer-like experience right here, jumping into a micro topic or a micro site here. Again, content governance would be top of mind, allowing specific content targeted to Joe. So essentially we don't wanna offer Joe anything he's not allowed to have, whether that be from a software asset perspective uh, or even just from a piece of knowledge that's not applicable. So that personalization becomes really critical in boosting his productivity and keeping him focused on the job at hand. And the very job we hired him to do is actually in the world of software development. So if he needs to test an application, he might need a test email available to him. And in the past, this could have been a little convoluted as to who to go to or who to ask, where to go to. Could have taken a week potentially. That can really turn in to a matter of days or even minutes here to request this. So this will allow him to get the aspects of his job completed as quickly as possible and essentially move on into those various different pieces of his job that we hired him to do. So now that we've boosted and essentially protected that productivity in the name of protecting the proverbial house, Joe remembers that he actually received kind of a nefarious email potentially and wants to better understand how to identify those phishing campaigns. Well, the bad news for Joe is he's not a spelling bee champion. The good news for Joe is he doesn't have to be. So it doesn't really matter misspellings, uh, terms that might not actually produce results now can because of things, again, complexity hidden behind the scenes like AI search. And this actually can go above and beyond what you're seeing just here. This can truly be an enterprise search that's indexing different sources of information. One of the most common ones we see is SharePoint in which we hear from our customers pretty commonly, I just can't handle the change management right now of moving all of our knowledge from all of our departments into ServiceNow. That's fine, we can be that change management agent and we can actually surface up SharePoint articles, other sources as well, not just SharePoint, and where that complexity of once more is hidden to the employee. And when they do a simple search, it's pulling from multiple sources, but making sure that we're surfacing up the right content. So for S&P Global, 44% increase of use of their knowledge base and a 47% increase of the digital channels by nature of utilizing Employee Center Pro like what we're seeing here today. And when I say those digital channels, I really just mean omni-channel in the sense that Joe can work the way he wants. Could be from a desktop, even through Microsoft Teams, everything that you just saw here today, or even from a mobile device because he needs to stay in the go and on the know. So if Joe is stepping onto the train, essentially to hop into the office, perhaps for that tasty lunch that we baited him with, so to say, he has all the same great capabilities right in his pocket from his mobile device, from his now application. iPhone, Android doesn't much matter to him, but again, that universal search where he can go ahead and get anything and everything he needs, uh, key content and communications being pushed to him, and being able to, again, have that dynamic nature to check up on his requests, uh, complete any tasks that he might have. And because we know that Joe's laptop is just a little bit older since that new one's on its way, if he needs help or any type of support, he always has his virtual agent, which is essentially little clones of yourselves in the organization, again, in the name of boosting productivity and reducing costs, where he can go ahead and let this virtual agent know that he's having some hardware issues today. 
it's going to handhold him through this process. He's able to confirm what type of device we're talking about here. And it's proactively offering up some steps. Again, productivity is being boosted because we're not reaching out to someone in IT support. And most importantly for Joe, he doesn't have to wait around for someone to get back to him. So let's say that he hit a dead end. Those steps actually weren't helpful. It happens from time to time. But the most important part is we still need to have a path for Joe. So what it's going to do next is push out some information and say, hey, it might be worth checking some of these things out. If he says, nah, that didn't actually help me. Again, the key with service now is the fact that there are no dead ends. An employee is always able to get the help and care that they need. And very simply from here, he can go ahead and open up that IT ticket to get that further help. And he knows that work has just flowed through the organization in his name and in his productivity. So if he needed to take a physical picture of something, he could do so right here from his device or even update with further details, utilizing native capabilities on his phone, microphone not working, and go ahead and post that update and know that the organization is getting to work on getting him back to work. So with all of that in mind, I think it's so important to talk about Unilever here. And they had a 47% reduction in time spent performing transactional activities like what you just saw there. Because Joe could truly self-serve through that virtual agent, through various different requests or even searches, that put time back in the strategic piggy bank for your organization, that transactional load was lifted. So imagine what your organization could do with 47% reduction in time, like what Unilever saw. But this might beg the question of how can we glean how our employees are choosing to utilize ServiceNow and interact with the needs that they have in the organization? Well, that's where our user experience analytic analyst Jules comes into play. So he has various dashboards that he's used to looking at in the world of ITSM, uh, but today he's actually gonna focus on user analytics. So these are a number of different delivered dashboards right out of the box that allows him to understand the various different channels, the changes that we need to make to our employees and what we're surfacing up to them to understand how our employees are actually consuming that change. So through these delivered analytics, this allows us to better understand usage, adoption, and even experiences that they're de desiring. Things like those top events would be something that many of our organizations are utilizing today. So we can see things like users, sessions, page views, and literally what they're looking at. And this allows us to refine or even double down on what we are doing not so well and what we're doing very well so we can go ahead and increase that. So this is viewable through multiple channels. We could focus in on something like a mobile device here. Uh, we could even go ahead and focus in on that desktop experience to really understand what our employees are telling us. And it can be everything from various different users of returning versus new, understanding that population that has never returned so we can start to really target them or even various different analytics based on things like those top events or even geographic natures as well. So what user analytics is solving for is one of the biggest challenges that customers face whenever they embark on a transformation journey and they introduce new technology, that organizational change. They need to be able to deliver it effectively and drive user adoption. And for Rider, that's exactly what they did. So they had 1 million uses of the unified portal in 90 days and 385,000 knowledge base article views since their launch. And what you should take away from that is those were questions that were deflected to their line of business that their employees were truly empowered to be able to know, do, and get the help and care that they needed to receive. So with that, I'd love to thank you for your time. It's been an absolute thrill for me to share with you how to establish a modern employee experience with ServiceNow's Employee Center Pro with ITSM. Thank you so much for the opportunity, and I know you're going to see the boost in productivity and reduction in costs that I shared with some of our customer stories today. Have a great day.